would like to welcome all of you to the beautiful Sint Janskerk to celebrate Maastricht University 45th Dies Natalis. I would like to, but I can't. The Sint Janskerk is empty, as is my toga. With a heavy heart, we have decided to postpone the festivities until we can actually come together to celebrate this beautiful university and all of you who play such a crucial role in the flourishing of the youngest university of the Netherlands. Your health and safety is paramount and we take our responsibility towards our community very seriously, especially during this long lasting pandemic. I have to say it was a difficult decision, especially since we celebrate our 45th anniversary, but a necessary one. This is also what has informed our choice for this year's recipient of the honorary doctorate. Professor Jaap van Dissel, head of the Netherlands Outbreak Management Team, who has become a symbol of very difficult but necessary decisions based on the best available scientific evidence. Professor van Dissel has done an admirable job under very difficult circumstances, and we want to acknowledge that and thank him for it even if the upshot is me holding a monologue in an empty church. When recently asked if it was difficult to deal with so much uncertainty and having to constantly adapt position and course of action, Jaap van Dissel said that scientists actually like having to change their point of view because of new data and insights. That is what we call progress. It's a win, actually, for the scientific method. Of the evolving advice of the outbreak management team, which often leads to changes in policy, he once said, and I'm quoting, in science, this is a fact of life. But I can imagine that in politics, this is a much trickier issue. End of quote. For all the sacrifices this pandemic asks from us, we should also be grateful that so many academics work day and night to contribute to combating this crisis and addressing its terrible effects. I also would like to take this opportunity here today to announce the names of our distinguished prize winners, a much valued tradition during our Dies Natalis. The annual Edmund Hustings Prize for Science this year goes to Laura Wienands from FHML. The Wienand Weine Education Prizes, you hear me correctly, go to our dedicated heads of the bureaus of education. And I will name them René Nijssen from FHML, Katrien Kerkman from FPN, Colin Prampeler from FASELS, Joel Kastermans from SBE, Roel Gillissen from Law and Judith Buddenberg from FSE. And the dissertation prize goes to Matteo Bonelli from Law. Congratulations to all of you and thank you so much for your contributions. Now, of course, this is not it. We will award all of you personally during the opening of the academic year, which hopefully will be a big festival on Monday, 30 August where we will elaborate on all of the achievements of our recipients. Now, on our website today, you can also find portraits of all the student prize winners for the best thesis, both the bachelor's and the master's. It's really well worth a look. There are beautiful movies there, and our students have done amazing work, and it would be a shame if it went unnoticed. So please go and have a look. Now, in his New Year's address, our president, Martin Paul, has called 2020 the most difficult year in this university's history. And I can only concur. With the cyber attack transitioning seamlessly into a global pandemic, this was a year of crisis and extreme circumstances, which continue to this very day. Now, I know this will be of little consolation, but what we have achieved is truly marvelous given the challenges that we have faced and the strain this has put on our relationship with others, with ourselves and with our work. Now you have all carried on despite everything. You have really, really 
done your part to keep this ship afloat. However, you will never, never hear me say we simply carried on. It was neither simple nor easy. From those who have lost loved ones to those who needed months to recover from long COVID. From those who couldn't see their family and friends in far away places to those just stuck inside the house, struggling with feelings of isolation. And also our students, I'm so proud of them because they are carrying on admirably. Their results look impressive and I'm glad about that. But at the same time, I'm also honestly a bit concerned because a single-minded pursuit of academic excellence and an internalized pressure to perform will also result in unsustainable stress. And that's what we witness at this very moment. So it's great that you, our students, are striving for good grades and top performances, but be aware that your studies, especially in these extraordinary circumstances, are also about developing life skills like persistence, resilience, flexibility, and most importantly, how to take care of your own mental and physical well-being. And once you graduate, the exams will come to an end, but the real test today, tomorrow, and every day after that is how you deal with adversity. This past year has taken a terrible toll on us in all aspects of life, but defeat us, it did not. We will really emerge from this pandemic stronger and wiser. It was also a reaffirmation of some principles that had already been guiding UM's identity. Human connection and appreciation are vital, health and well-being are vital, and a good work-life balance is vital. Now, I believe we also need to discuss what lessons and practices adopted during the COVID crisis we actually want to preserve for the future. Once we safely return to our offices, hopefully very soon, because we miss all of you, we want to continue using digital technology and continuously improve also the organizational structures to allow people to work from home more, to be more flexible when it comes to duties and activities outside of work, whether it's raising your children, caring for loved ones, or taking care of their well-being and their flourishing. Now, the same spirit, of course, also applies to the student's experience. We take pride in our innovative, constantly improving education, and blended learning, which is a combination of on and offline education complementing each other, is something we had already been looking into for quite some time already before COVID. Now, I believe that the lockdown has acted as a catalyst and a laboratory here. We had to take stock of our options in a very emergency setting. And in many cases, we had to be bold and take a big leap into the unknown. And thanks to the flexibility and work ethic of our students, and the resourcefulness and creativity and dedication of our teachers and support staff, I think it has been a success, even given the circumstances. It's not perfect, but we, we came from, from quite far. And interactions inside and outside the classroom, they are crucial to our collaborative, problem-based approach to education. Now, while we want to return to that as quickly as possible, we're also determined not to lose either the gains or the momentum of our exploration of blended learning. Everyone involved in this year of experimentation and innovation should be proud to have been part of this momentous time. Although, again, I realize that doesn't make things any easier right now if you're at home, homeschooling, for instance, your own children. But for those of you that know me, I am optimistic. I'm very optimistic and I also want to emphasize that we have overcome tremendous obstacles and we have grown into the process. So it's also important to acknowledge what we have, what we have achieved. Now, our ambitious groundbreaking recognition and reward scheme was supposed to be the theme of this Dies Natalis. And I very much, much look forward to sharing more about it soon because it's a topic very dear to me. For now, I think it suffices to say that we witness even more the diverse ways in which our academics make a difference 
as researchers, as educators, as leaders, as communicators, and true academic citizens. Now, 2020, more than any other year in the last 45, has shown that all of these aspects matter and that they should all receive recognition, support, and rewards. And the same holds true for our very, very valued support staff. I myself cannot wait to also start a national program to enhance our career tracks for support staff. And ultimately, I would hope this could result in abandoning this distinction of support staff and academic staff altogether. Now, at Maastricht, we're already taking bold steps to drive developments, for instance, in the academic career tracks. And as I said, I look forward to sharing our overarching vision and concrete steps with regard to the implementation very, very soon, probably somewhere in February. But it's not a one-way street. Whether it's recognition and rewards, the move towards blended education, or the way we wish to work in the future. We are still on the threshold of the unknown and we really have to shape the future together. And as far as I am concerned, the only good way to do this is really together. So I want to inspire a broad conversation within our community to take on board everyone's experiences, ideas and concerns. I already said it in my own inaugural speech as rector four years ago in a full church being terribly nervous, that my vision on leadership revolves around diversity and dialogue. So we need to facilitate our people, our students, our academics, our employees to flourish in the way that works best for them and to empower them to contribute as much as they can. Now, while my commitment to this end is set in stone, I'm flexible on how to put it into practice. So suggestions and feedback from everyone in our community are crucial to this. And in keeping with the unofficial slogan of 2020, please unmute. I want to hear what you have to say. Let's celebrate the last 45 years today, or whenever you'll find time to toast to our community. And let's keep in mind all the things this crisis has taught us that we are never entirely masters of our own fate. We can only control how we respond to adversity. That with enough curiosity, creativity and resilience, innovation and insight can emerge from any problem. And how valuable it is to encounter a helping hand and an open ear in difficult times. Let us be grateful that we can rely on each other, that we are part of what I think is a wonderful community of a very young, well, 45, but it's still young, university. Thank you very much.